Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will try to create those intricate patterns or intricate shapes inside Microsoft Word using Visual Basic for applications. And it's heavily based on my R2 tutorials being create spirograph in Microsoft Word the manual way and create spirograph in Microsoft Word using macros. So with all that said, let's get started. I will start with a blank document and I will open the macros, create a new macro and I will call this step and repeat which is usually the number of fun uh, name of function in the R applications. And I also need some shapes. So I will draw, insert a new shape. And this time it may be, for example, a diamond shape. So I'll dry, draw a diamond with white fill, black outline. And I may change the width of the outline to maybe three quarters or so. And I will jump to Maker. So what we want to do is we want to work with the selection. So I'll set selection dot shape range. If I set the index to one, that will be the first selected shapes. And I will set, say, duplicate. I will duplicate this shape. Then I will say that with this duplicated shape, I want to do something. I want to set the left position to be same as the previous shape. So I will just set the left to be selection dot shape range, first shape dot left. And I will do the same for the top position just so I'm sure that it's on the very same position as was the previous shape. Okay, so this will copy our shape. If I run the script or run the macro, I have two different shapes, but they are very same looking on the same position and in the same size. So I have to do something else. I have to create a loop which will duplicate, multi duplicate the shape multiple times. So I need few variables. I need the number of shapes as long and I need to know the rotation. Let's say this is rotation total as long or double. I need to know the rotation increment as double. And I will probably scale it as well. So I will set this scale increment as double as well. So let's start slow. Let's create a new loop. So for counter going from one to number of shapes. I will simply duplicate it and I will say next counter. I have to specify the number of shapes. So I will set the number of shapes shapes to be, for example, 10 for now. And I will set the rotation total to be, I don't know, maybe 45 degrees. So it rotates 45 degrees for the last shape. Then I have to calculate the increment. So rotation increment would be the number or rotation rotation total, sorry, total divided by number of shapes. And I'll also set the scale increment to some value, for example, two. So let's start with the rotation and it's very same as in the previous tutorial for the spear graph. So we'll say, set the rotation equals to rotation increment times the counter. So for each new each counter value, it will rotate by some angle. So if I run this, I have to first select the shape. Of course, if I run this, I should get 10 different shapes, each being rotated by 45 divided by 10. That is four and a half degree. I have to scale it as well. So what I will do is I will select everything except for the first shape, like like so, delete it, and then I will add the code for scaling. So I will say that with this shape, I will set scale height, for example. I have to set the factor, which is how much I want this to be scaled. One means that there is no scaling, it's 100%. So I will set it to scale increment times counter. So it will go from two to counter which is a uh, number of shapes in the biggest value so it's 2 times 10 it's 20 percent so it will set it to be 100 minus 20 percent so it will go to 80 percent as well, actually then i have to divide by 100 so i will get this as a percentage value then i will set the relative to original size which is something that has to be set to false it doesn't apply but it has to be there and the last thing is a scale which is actually from which point it will be scaled and we have to set this to from a middle otherwise it would not work from middle then i will copy this entire line 
and change the scale height to scale bit. So I will just scale it both the height and the bit to the same value. So if I run this again, I'm getting a little bit smaller uh, diamond, but again, since the scale increment is set to 2 and the number of shapes to 10, this means that the, it scaled to 80% for the smallest uh, diamond shape, which is probably still too much. So what I can do is, again, delete everything except for the first shape, and I can set the scale increment to some bigger value, for example, 4 or 5. Maybe I can say to even like um, 6 or 7. So for the 6, it will be scaled, the smallest one is scaled to 40%. And immediately I'm getting much more interesting shape. Now one thing to notice is that the rotation, actual rotation in degrees inside Microsoft Word could be set to floating point value, but it seems like that it still only deals with integers, which means that we have now number of shapes set to 10 and the rotation total to be 45, which means that the increment is set to four and a half degrees, which means that if you look closely, it's not you know, perfectly aligned or rotated. So what we can do is we can set the number of number of shapes to some value, which would be divisible by rotation totals like nine or five or whatever. Maybe we can move to next shape. Maybe we can choose different shape than just the diamond. Maybe we can play with hexagon instead. I have to move this handle a little bit to the right side to make sure it's a true hexagon. Then I will change the shape field to white and outline to black. The weight to maybe half points only. I can set the rotation total to either 120 or 60 or maybe just 30. Number of shapes maybe 30 as well and the scale increment maybe to 3. So it, it will go 3 times 30 is 90. It will go down to just 10%. If I run this, you will see it will get really small shape. The smallest hexagon would be only 10% of the bigger, bigger one. Maybe I can set the rotation to some bigger value. Since we have a lot of space in here, maybe I can set it back to 60 or 120. And if I move it like this so we can see how it's being drawn. The edges, when they are close to each other, they are forming a, like a darker color, which creates this nice looking pattern. Now, one thing to notice or mention is that the world is not really very great at dealing with drawing the outlines. It tries to align everything to pixels, which sometimes may look like an error. For example, if I zoom out like this, you may notice if it looks like some of those shapes are far from each other than the other ones. If I zoom all the way in, you will see that everything is right. It's just the way that draw that the board draws those hexagons or shapes. And it's basically it. You can apply the macro to any shape inside board. In my previous example, you've seen I've used hexagons, but I've used also the pentagon and triangle as well. And I've played with the number of copies. The max angle 72 for the hexagon is chosen just because 360 divided by 5 is 72. Or I can show the flipped hexagon by dividing 72 by 2, which is 36. And in very same, I'm using 60 degrees for triangle, so it's showing the opposite or, or rotated triangle in the middle. So that's all. Thanks for watching.